All right, so of course we're all concerned about the fourth wave, we're concerned about Omicron, but at the same time we are hearing positive developments and Africa moving closer to developing its mRNA vaccines itself. Of course, South Africa expected to set up that hub. We heard about it earlier this year. More details coming through today. Let's speak now to Hadi Jokos, who's been covering that story and other aspects of what's happening with COVID-19. So, Heidi, hello. Yesterday we heard that the booster shot, a third shot essentially, for all adults, is going to be made available. Sapra saying that they had approved that. Uh, the health regulator approved that. And, of course, today the Department of Health saying, yes, absolutely it's now available but they've also said something interesting and somewhat different to what the health products uh, regulator has said yesterday Sapra said that when it comes to 12 to 17 year olds those who've been severely immunocompromised are the ones who can get another shot but the Department of Health communicated this morning saying that everyone over 12 who's had the shot can get another have you been able to get clarity on this particular age cohort because we know in other countries 12 to 17 year olds can get two shots and SAPRA specifically decided only one shot has SAPRA changed their mind has the health department got it wrong will not you explain to us I don't think anybody got it wrong, Sally. Well, I hope nobody got it wrong because we're dealing with COVID-19 jabs here. Uh, but from my understanding, it seems as though the application was made to SAPRA to have um, those 12 to 17 years old getting a booster shot, uh, what they would call, but uh, it's obviously just a second Pfizer shot. Previously, we were told that those uh, between the age of 12 to 17 would only get one Pfizer shot because they were worried about uh, complications around heart inflammation that could be caused after taking the COVID-19 jab. It seems as though that's not the case anymore and um, the medicine regulator, of course, doing sufficient studies and data presented to them that show otherwise. Uh, what's very clear from the Department of Health in their press statement that they released a few hours ago is that tomorrow they will be able to go into further detail regarding um, these booster shots for those 12 to 17 years old, as well as those for, um, for those who received uh, their second Pfizer shot six months ago. And that is, of course, the most vulnerable in our society. That is those 60 and above, uh, 50 and above. I do know that um, the, the age group 60 and above got their second Pfizer uh, jab um, around June, uh, those that were eligible to get it after 42 days. So they will be eligible to get their vaccine uh, as early as Jan. Uh, but of course, the Department of Health will need to clarify on this because SARPRA's statement is quite clear, Sally. It says that those with comorbidity those uh, over the age of 12 with comorbidities will be eligible to get a second Pfizer shot, whereas the Department of Health is saying those who got their first Pfizer shot that are between the age of 12 to 17 mm. are eligible as of today to get their second Pfizer shot. So I don't think that uh, anybody got it wrong. I just think there's no clear communication with regards to who exactly is eligible. But I, I do know that some teenagers have already received an SMS to say that they can go and get their second jab. All right, so that'll be very interesting. We normally get that briefing on a Friday, so I'm sure we'll get more uh, clarity on that issue. Now, Heidi, this mRNA technology hub, uh, it, it, was, it was mentioned, it was announced a few months ago, but it's under discussion again today. So what new details have you got about this hub? So, Sally, I was telling Shahan earlier on, I'm reminded once again why I'm a journalist, because it's very complicated and very scientific. <laughs> but basically, this was all sparked from the fact uh, that... Uh, Afri the African continent and African countries and South Africa were unable to easily access COVID-19 vaccines, especially the mRNA uh, technology used vaccines. And uh, Africa was last in line because, of course, the richer and more advanced economies and countries were able to get their hands on vaccines a lot quicker. Now, with this pandemic, it's highlighted the fact that there is an urgent need 
for this technology hub, the mRNA technology hub, and this has been established here in South Africa. There will be hubs that will be established and set up across Africa, and this will uh, be able to develop and manufacture mRNA vaccines, not just COVID-19 vaccines, but any kind of vaccine that uses this technology. This is going to be a game changer for um, vaccines, vaccine procurement on the African continent, because right now, almost 99% of vaccines that are being used on the African continent, especially COVID-19 vaccines, are being imported. We do not have the means to create our own vaccines, and this is because it, there's no technology for it. There's a lot of secrecy and uh, the patent around how these vaccines are uh, developed and manufactured is a big secret. We do know that Pfizer has not agreed uh, to um, uh, come on board with this hub and this new technology. So uh, scientists uh, and, of course, BioVac and Afrigen have decided to start this hub together with, of course, the South African government so that we can be able to create these vaccines and provide it to the rest of Africa. But it's important for us to listen to the Deputy Minister of Science and Technology and Innovation, Minister, Deputy Minister Buti Manamela, on why exactly this is going to be important and a game changer for South Africa and the African continent. The South African hub will involve in end-to-end -end development of mRNA-based vaccines. It will serve as an uh, mRNA vaccine training facility where technology is established at industrial scale and clinical development is performed. A training center will be established as part I mean, as well as a current goods manufacturing practice clinical trial production facility to support vaccine development. Commercial man uh, manufacture of an mRNA vaccine will be key both to meeting demand and to ensuring the sustainability of the technology transfer. To this end, full use will be made of South African technical expertise in genomics, immunology, vaccine manufacturing, and clinical trials thus feeding the pipeline for local manufacturing. And BioVac, Heidi, uh, is going to play quite a significant role in this hub. Just remind us who BioVac is. If I'm not mistaken, it's partly government-owned. And did you get any time frames today on when we might see the first mRNA manufactured in Africa vaccines for COVID uh, rolling out of the hub? Yes, Ali. So we do know that uh, BioVac is partially government owned. Of course, government uh, will have a significant role to play uh, in terms of this mRNA technology hub. This is why, of course, you are seeing the likes of um, the Department of Science, Technology and Innovation. We also were expecting the health minister to be part of this briefing today, but uh, the DG was there um, just to explain the importance of such a hub and the importance of um, South Africa providing a solution for the African continent and how it is very much possible. We just need the resources to be pumped into this. But we do know that it's going to cost, listen to this, 96 million uh, euros between 2021 and uh, 2026. So this is going to be a huge um, uh, investment, but of course it's going to bring the necessary need and change in terms of vaccine procurement and getting these vaccines that are so needed, especially if we're going to have COVID. Nobody knows when uh, this is going to end, but just in terms of uh, vaccines. What we do understand according to BioVac, who is going to be manufacturing these vaccines, it's important to note that Afrigen, that's also a South African company, will be developing these vaccines and BioVac will be manufacturing these vaccines to be distributed to the African continent, uh, they are predicting that by 2023, early 2023, the first vaccines will be ready for use. So it's still a long way, but of course, as you can imagine, a lot of work needs to be done, make sure the technology is right, the clinical trials, uh, and also funding, I, I can imagine, is going to be a huge issue. But let's listen to the CEO of BioVac on this matter. We'll need to show the regulator that we can manufacture, uh, well, firstly, that the product can be scaled up, that we can manufacture consistently, that we can interact with the regulator and also be able to uh, internationalize the product and go through WHO, PQ and all other regulatory systems. And that is what a spoke would really need to be doing. And I'm only talking from a biotech perspective, but these are uh, general concepts that as the hub identifies uh, other spoke, this is what we need to be. It would need to be 
you know, uh, companies and organizations that would really be able to, you know, take on the patent and be really be able to uh, uh, take the product and, uh, and upscale it and really take it and commercialize it and make use of the technology even beyond the immediate uh, SARS-CoV-2. Sure. So it's fantastic news, but it's a lot of money. That's like 1.7 billion rand. Heidi, are South African taxpayers going to foot the bill? Is it a global effort? Do we know about the funding? It's probably going to be a global effort, but uh, definitely uh, a lot coming from South African taxpayers. The World Health Organization saying that it's very important for this project to be as transparent as possible because there's so much money going into it. And they made it very clear that it's going to be public funds. Thank you so much. That's our reporter, Heidi Jokos. Let's stay uh, with advancements.